For more on this story, we're pleased to be joined by Congressman Steve Russell of Oklahoma. Steve serves as a member of both the House Armed Services Committee and the House Committee on Government Oversight and Reform. He's a combat veteran who commanded a battalion in Tikrit, Iraq. And Steve will be going to the floor of the House shortly for a special order to talk about the role of our military. For now, Steve, we thank you for the time here on Newsmax Prime. Well, it's great to be with you. Now, you have been involved with ground troops. You helped capture Saddam Hussein. Do we need ground troops from the United States in this fight against ISIS? A hammer without an anvil is useless. You cannot win anything with a defensive, wait-out-the-clock posture. Uh, if you do want to play defense and wait out the clock, you better be ahead on the scoreboard. And we're not. Uh, we need to absolutely uh, destroy ISIS. It, it, barbarity uh, like we've not seen in our lifetimes. And America has the goodwill and capacity to build a coalition to put it into this. It can't be a unitary effort, but we do have the capacity and the intelligence and the goodwill and leadership, especially on the heels of what's happened in France, to make this stop. Now, Steve, we heard the president in just a few minutes ago from his press conference uh, at the G20 summit saying he doesn't want to send our troops in because troops get injured and get killed. And he claims he wants to avoid the mentality of shoot first, aim later. What comments would you have for our commander in chief? Look, we need to take handcuffs off. Uh, the Secretary of Defense can't be endorsing plans. That says, I don't have your back if it gets screwed up. It needs to be approving plans. And we need to take the handcuffs off our existing special operations forces in theater, our existing air power that's in theater. Uh, they have the targets, and they can strike and do damage now while we debate what it should look like in the future. We have options. We have Russia that's opened the door and said, look, you know, a, a post-Syrian government's not going to include Assad. Okay, well, that says that we will have some governmental structure available to us without Assad, without having to build a new government. Syria survived civil war before, they can again. But none of it can happen if you have these barbarians committing acts of uh, horrific nature around the world. And look, when it comes to the pain and suffering that soldiers endure, I get that. I've lived that. I've had to do horrible things myself as an infantry combat soldier. But Patrick Henry, he did not say, give me safety or give me death. He said, give me liberty. And if we're going to have liberty... We have to be willing to defend it. Civilized man and his future is at stake. Steve, let me out. Let me ask you again to outline. You, you mentioned briefly the airstrikes. You talked about a changing dynamic with the Russians. Of course, now the Russians and French have set up a de facto alliance. Their navy is consulting. That. Yes, that's gone on. And the United States seems to be the um, the superpower out. Do you expect the president? To, uh, to sit down with Putin, or I guess next week, President Hollande visits the White House. Do you expect, expect the president to rethink his position? I think the president, honestly, wants all of these foreign policy issues to go away, and that he ticks out the next 14 months on foreign policy and defense. Now, he's not certainly going to do that with uh, climate change or with the economy or the other things. He's going to try to continue to do as much draconian effort as he can in that direction. But he wants to wait out the clock on foreign policy and defense, so I'm very concerned about it. But in terms of whether or not it's too late for the United States to become involved, that's absurd. Uh, we, we've seen examples where the United States was reluctant to get involved, you know, sparking Winston Churchill to say, uh, you can always count on America to do the right thing after they've exhausted every other possibility. And that's where we're at. At some point, though, why do we say it has to be us? And Americans ask that. Why us? Why does it always have to be us? It's the same reason that you ask a neighbor to help you with a heavy lift, or you turn to your pastor in times of crisis for guidance, or the same reason you turn to a policeman when you're in danger, or the same reason you turn to a soldier when your country is threatened. Congressman Steve Russell about to go to the House floor in a special order outlining what our priorities should be. Steve, we thank you for a preview of what you're going to say on the House floor here on Newsmax Prime.